Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to answer a question from a patron, someone who contributes to the channel through Patreon. And that person is PJ Segerson, has sent a message saying, Hi Dave, hope all is well. I have something of a silly question, not silly at all. If an SO239 connector is exposed to rain, can it simply be dried out, or is it no longer usable? I suppose this question applies to any coax connector. Many thanks from Philip, W1XVX. Let's take a look at what he's talking about here. First of all, here's some coax connector and I kind of pulled the end off so you could see the uh, braid that's underneath. I think this is a piece of 259 although it's uh, or, uh, this is uh, this is RG uh, 8X Let's look at some coax connectors here. I got a whole box full of connectors. This is an SO238. An SO239. SO239. Okay. Stamped on the bottom is an SO239. Let's get right up here so we can see it. It's got the threads for the connector. It's designed to be mounted to a bulkhead of some kind with uh, screws and then there's a solder connection right in here okay so one part of it is connected to the ground of the chassis and the other part is the active part that goes into here and now the other connector that is of interest to us is the PL258 here we go Okay, so the way this works, and this is designed for much bigger coax, but you put this on, and then you kind of scrunch this down, put this in here, put that over there, and crimp it. And you have the piece that comes out that needs to be soldered. And then you've got this crimped stuff here. Now, these connectors are not waterproof. Um, and the problem is that the water, even though there's a crimp connector over it, water will get down in there and into the braid. Now, if you look at that braid, it's kind of a copper metal mess. It's actually, if you go in here a little further, it's pretty regular. Um, but if you put this in water, it's going to wick. Uh, the surface uh, tension will cause it to wick up. And it will continue to wick up into the cable over time. And eventually, if this end is at a lower end, it'll wick right out the other end. Okay, so this is uh, the problem. Now these connectors are... Um, they don't go through, so this is waterproof in the sense that water won't go through there, but it can around the outside, depending on if there was a gasket put here or something like that. And then that will be soldered uh, right there. These connectors definitely are not waterproof. Uh, in fact, this ring, this outer ring comes all the way off. This outer ring comes all the way off. And you can see that it's just metal. There's no rubber or anything that might give you a watertight connection uh, around that thing. And simply putting this in there and then crimping it might give an electrical connection, but it's not going to give one for 
um, you know, forever, it's, and it's not weatherproof. So you're going to need to wrap a waterproof tape around connectors that are left outside. Now, what about the case where it just gets wet? And this is the case. Now, I'm thinking he's a, his call sign is W1, so he's New England or somewhere up there. It can be kind of wet in the, uh, in all during the year. You get rainstorms and everything that's wet, so green. Um, and if you get a lot of water in your connectors, they will eventually ruin the coax. And this is why a lot of people say your coax should be replaced every two or three years. Now what actually is the um, problem? Well, this internal uh, one right here, the inner cable, um, is not subject so much to it, but you get water in here. This is copper. You've got a um, very good quality plastic coating on it, but it will still leach a little bit of chemical and after a while what you're going to find is that the water gets in there and eats away at the copper and so eventually you get less and less uh, conductivity and more and more resistance in the coax. It doesn't physically make the coax break down but it's not in very good shape. You can measure the additional resistance in coax just with an ohmmeter if you want um, or uh, you can use um, like put in a dummy load at the end of the coax put power into it and see what the SWR does um, extra power can actually cause that steam to get very hot in there I would recommend that if you live in a wet environment, you take steps to protect your coax, always. Anytime you put it on something, you put something waterproof uh, over it. Now, if you live out where I live, where it is quite dry, rain is not common. And if the thing gets a little bit wet, it's going to dry in the heat. In, in the dryness that follows. Our outdoor temperature right now is 87 degrees with 24 percent humidity and that will tend to dry out a coax. Coax left in the sun this will tend to drive the water out of the coax. So out here in the west I don't worry too much about it. Now if I know it's going to be a permanent permanent connection in other words, I intend to use this antenna, like for example, my step IR, big IR. I just, uh, uh, that's going to be my uh, vertical for a long time to come. So those connections are pretty well uh, treated. So I don't know that I answer your question directly, but I'm saying that yes, here's your PL250 nine in your SO238 except this says SO239 on it so fine good for it um, get these connectors over here where they can be seen in here okay um, this is the one he was asking about but all of the all of the connectors need to be protected from water. If you're going to just throw up something for the afternoon, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but if you know you're going to get pounded by a bad thunderstorm, yeah, I'd worry about it and go ahead and put some uh, tape over it. Electrical tape uh, stretches a little bit, which tends to stretch it around the thing so it'll make it waterproof, but it doesn't last a long time in that configuration. I would put a waterproof tape on it first, like this. Um, this is from um, 3M insulating tape, and the number in there is 2CF8. 2CF8. 
and it's got this cover and this black tape stretchy sticks to itself you put it around it make it waterproof and then put some electrical tape around it just for the UV protection so I think that answers your question uh, Mark what you need to do is if you're going to leave it out for any length of time especially east of the Mississippi uh, that you'd go ahead and uh, uh, treat it at least with electrical tape preferably with something more permanent if you're out here in the west where it's rarely wet and when it is wet it just lasts for a little while I wouldn't worry about it horribly because that coax then is going to get really hot and when you're leaving this black stuff out in the sun, it gets hot. Uh, it will drive out the water that's uh, inside of them. So there you have it. If you would like to help feed the YouTube algorithm, please subscribe. Please click like. Please share. And if you'd like to support the channel financially, you certainly may do so by going to um, decastler.com support and picking away there. Until we next meet, 73.